let me introduce myself. My name is Vladislav, or just short Vladi and Sam. We are security researcher at the university in Bochum, and we will talk to, uh, today about the security of PDF signatures. But before I start hacking stuff and breaking stuff, let me introduce ourselves and uh, how do we work, why PDFs are so interesting for us. So at the beginning, um, we are researchers and we need to publish our work. And um, basically we need to motivate, we write papers and uh, submit them to peer reviewed conferences, they are reviewed by security experts, not PDF experts. And the first comments, the first papers were rejected with the comment, who cares about PDF signatures, uh, who uses them, and we need to motivate um, this part uh, much better. So we start searching uh, for um, yeah, uh, concrete numbers, companies, they are using it. And it's quite hard to find such kind of information. So basically, we grabbed the Adobe Financial Report to get some concrete numbers, and this is a lot of work because it's a financial report, not intended to, to present some concrete numbers. So you're the PDF community, and if you, if you ask me what I want to, to see as data provided by you, these are concrete numbers, who uses it, how much users use PDFs, PDF signatures, PDF encryption, and so on and so forth. I saw today um, so much information about you have the numbers, but you don't publish it. So try to, to do it. Um, it makes our life much, much easier. And um, as far, I enjoyed reading the financial report, but there are more efficient ways to do it. OK. Um, but from, secure, for, from researcher point of view, why we focus on PDFs? Because usually, if you are a security expert, you need to break stuff. And um, if you break one application, this is just a pen test. You get paid for it and then forget about it. From scientific point of view, you need to generalize problems. So you need more applications. And this is the way um, why PDFs are important for us. They are libraries, applications, services, and so on and so forth. So we can do some hacking stuff, generalize, extract core issues, and submit them to a scientific conference. This is our contribution. And for this reason, this was quite interesting for us, and we didn't have to search much to find such kind of applications. From security point of view, PDF supports a lot of features. This doesn't mean that these features are automatically leading to security issues, but they increase the surface we can use for attack. For example, we have interactive features, we have, of course, JavaScript, and we have even multimedia, like 3D, audio, video, and so forth. So again, this does not mean that these features are dangerous, but they just increase the surface which we can use to carry out different attacks. And even more interesting, PDF support cryptography. They can be encrypted, and they can be also digitally signed. So for security experts, there is a lot of area where we can concentrate on and move around and try uh, to bypass stuff. OK, so let's talk about more about security. So it's a PDF. What could go wrong? Um, let me do a short round, uh, a road trip uh, about the security of PDFs. I will miss a lot of related work. I will concentrate on the most important parts. In 2001, the first PDF-based virus was uh, published. This was the Peachy virus. It was the Visual Basic uh, script um, embedded into PDF files. It was a game um, convincing users to click on a link and uh, carry out some malicious code or execute some malicious code. Um, in 2003, the first um, JavaScript-based virus was uh, published, and this was um, vulnerability in the parsing engine of the JavaScript. So basically, um, a malicious file was stored in the plugin folder of Adobe and executed every time Adobe Reader was started. And so on, uh, the malicious code was carried out every time the, the reader was used. After that, um, in 2007 and 2008, the first insecure features 
was, in, uh, was um, abused. Insecure feature means, we mean that legitimate features introduced by the PDF specification were used for bad stuff. Uh, for example, to execute code, to invoke some URLs, and so on and so forth. And this was, you, um, this was, uh, this were a black hat talk. So they, uh, the researchers concentrated on isolated um, problems, um, which we later kept up uh, and uh, provide a more comprehensive analysis. In the, in the next years, as you can see, even in 2018, um, such kind of insecure features were uh, discovered or reported on different applications. And the results of all this research on the security was that currently many, many, many PDF applications warn or even don't, uh, don't execute any of these dangerous features. For example, if you get the launch action starting on um, external application, you get a warning that you're not allowed to do it or you explicitly should allow it. Or if you want to call some uh, URLs, then you get a warning before um, th this URL is called. Also, if JavaScript is embedded, then you get also a warning, um, of course, depend on the application you use. Okay, then what happened um, also in 2000 or between uh, 2001 and 2018. In 2017, the first cryptographic attack was introduced. And this was not concretely a PDF problem, but it was the, SHA, uh, the shatter attack attacked the um, SHA uh, function. So a collision was found. And the proof of concept were two PDF files having the same hash sum. And this is relevant for the PDF signatures. And then in 2009, 19, we published our first work. So the motivation of our work was uh, we got a contract from the European Commission, we opened it, and we got a lot of warnings during the signature validation. And our boss asked us, how does it work? Why we get such kind of warnings? We, that we didn't have a clue about PDFs. We didn't know anything about how it works. And we started investigating. And two years later, we published our um, first paper. So let's take a look what we did. This is a simple attack which worked, and we prepared a short video. Basically, we have here two, um, two files. I need to see if it works. Yeah, the video started. So we have two different files. The first one is validly signed PDF, for example, by the CEO. And you see the signature is valid. No warnings are shown. Um, and uh, the Adobe Reader states uh, that content was not modified at all. Okay, and we have the second one, um, which has it, not, it is not signed, and it has the, the text manipulated by the attacker. Now we will use the best hacking tool for PDFs. As mentioned yesterday, we use Notepad++. And on the left side, you see the signed document. On the right side, you see the malicious one. So first, we need to find where the content um, is defined. And you see, uh, as you can see, this is in the object 38. So on the right side, we have the malicious one. And this object contains the manipulated by attacker. So this is our content. It's encoded or zipped. Um, and now we will just copy paste the malicious content into the sign um, document. So this happens here. Okay, so probably you will, you should assume that if we do such kind of stuff, we will break the signature, right? It should not possible. And this is correct. So let's store the document, we open it, and as you can see, first we exchanged here the content. Perfectly fine, and the reader says um, the signature is not valid. You tampered uh, the content. Perfectly fine. It works like it should be. So let's try to carry out one attack. I don't know if everybody is familiar with the byte range. The byte range is in the signature dictionary and just states what, which area is signed? It states the bytes which are covered by the, um, by the signature. So we decided um, in our research just to delete it. The idea is 
if the application does not find what is signed, but it finds the certificate and so on and so forth, we hope that something goes wrong and um, the signature validation is skipped. So we remove the byte range, start the file, and now, as you can see, the Adobe Reader um, states or stated back in nine, uh, 20, um, um, 19 that the signature is valid. So this was one of the attacks we carry out. Um, this, was, this is the most simple attack we carry out. So let's talk about our results. So as you can see, this is the table with our results. We provided um, in our paper the first comprehensive analysis uh, on PDF signatures. And uh, we came up with three novel attacks. Um, these are incremental saving attacks, signature wrapping, and universal signature forgery. And here you see that Adobe was made a lot of work and a lot of very good work to prevent the, uh, this kind of attacks. For example, they were not vulnerable against the, uh, the first one and the second one, but the last one I already showed it to you. Um, and this was just an implementation uh, error. It could happen. It should not be, but it's part of the life and um, it could be very easily fixed. But uh, more interesting is that 21 of 22 applications were vulnerable back then. So basically we broke every single application. The only one was Adobe Reader 9 because this is the only application available on Linux. It has remote code execution, should not be used, was obsolete. Uh, but it was, uh, we, we were not able to bypass it. So this was, the, uh, these were the results of our first analysis. And we were quite surprised that uh, the situation was so bad. But the good news are the application reacted and fixed a lot of, of, of the vulnerabilities we reported to them. Great stuff. So in the same year, we also concentrated on PDF encryption and discovered a lot of um, issues there too. Um, but I will not talk uh, today about this. In 2020, we decided just to proceed with the analysis of digital signatures and we discovered the so-called shadow attacks. We will present the basic con concept of these attacks. So the idea was the applications did a great job to fix the previous vulnerabilities. So we needed new ideas and we created new attacker model, um, which we will explain further. The good, <laughs> the good news for us and the bad, of course, for the PDF was that these were novel attacks and we were able to bypass 16 out of 29 applications. Um, and among others, um, for example, applications which already have been fixed or were not vulnerable against the previous attacks. And after discovering shadow attacks, we published them. And um, in the same year, but the paper was published one year later, we sum up all the previous research regarding insecure features and extended a little bit the stuff, um, the attacks, and um, just summarized everything what could go wrong with legitimate features on PDFs which can be abused for bad stuff. And last but not least, we concentrated on PDF certification. To be honest, we were not able to understand it. Um, at the very beginning, why do you need approval signatures, certification signatures? And as part of uh, his master thesis, we tried to understand it and we came up with new ideas for, for attacks and we will present one of the attacks today too. So, what, um, what were the results of this analysis of the last paper, just on the certification? We came up with two novel attacks, uh, each for the um, according level uh, two or three of the certification, and uh, we were able to bypass 21 of 26 applications, of course, only on the first layer. So if you open the document and do not click on additional validation and so on, so um, if you try to investigate further if the application is vulnerable, then the results are a little bit better, but still the problem is there. And Simon will show you how exactly it works. So for this part, we abused only legitimate features allowed to do. So we provided only um, modifications which are allowed according to the specification and try to exchange content or to overlay it. Okay. This is regarding the overview and security road trip over the security. Now, 
Um, Simon, we will talk about digital signed PDFs and um, some of the core issues. Have fun. So, thank you, Vladislav. Um, so let's talk about digital signatures in more detail. Um, on the left side, we see an unsigned PDF document, in this case, an Amazon invoice. And if Amazon signs this document, a uh, signature validation panel is now clickable. And uh, usually, a signature form field is added, which can contain both the graphical and the text part. And at the top, there's now a signature bar, which indicates uh, um, the signature status. In this case, the signature is valid, and the certificate is trusted. So what happens if we sign a PDF document? Um, on the left side, we see um, the unsigned PDF document and the four parts, the header, the body, the XREF, and the trailer section. And in object number four, we see the content stream uh, for the document on the right side. And if we add a signature to this document, we usually do this within an incremental update. So we add an incremental update, and in this case, <coughs> the employee has signed the document. But we are not limited to one signature. We can also add multiple signatures. And again, we do this within a multi, in, uh, through an incremental update. So now uh, the legal department has also signed the document. And if we take a look on the signature validation panel, we now see two revisions of the same document. So the revision one was uh, directly created after the employee has signed the document and the revision two was created directly after the legal department assigned the document. And if we click on the revision one, uh, we see we got a little bit more information about the signer, the signing time, and uh, we are able to display the document um, right after the employee has signed, um, has signed this document. And now we see this document without any further um, incremental updates. So this is a very useful feature to detect um, attacks on PDF signatures, because further incremental updates are uh, hidden. And um, this can be a very useful feature for many of our attacks, but not for all. OK, let's talk about the coverage of uh, signatures. So we got our signed PDF document. And our incremental update um, contains a body update, an XRIF section update, and trailer update. And um, we, calculate, um, we calculate a hash value um, over, the, uh, over the content and sign this hash value. So if we change anything in this protected area, so in the document uh, itself, um, the hash value differs. And so this leads to an invalid uh, signature. If we sign this document twice, um, now the second signature protects the whole document, and, uh, but the signature one remains untouched. So, but we are able to modify a PDF document, even if it's, if it's signed, um, through an incremental update. So the signature does not always protect the whole document. So and this is a very important part. So let's talk about the core issues, and we start with partial signatures. So the story so far, um, our attacker is in the position of a signed PDF document, and he's able to manipulate this document. And now he sends this to the victim, and um, the attacker has changed the content of the, um, of the uh, PDF document um, through an incremental update. So in this case, our victim is Amazon, and the attacker want to trick Amazon into a $1 trillion refund. And since the signature was made by Amazon and the signature is valid, of course you will get this refund. No one will double check this. <laughs> okay, we already uh, talked about incremental updates and the incremental saving attack uses incremental updates to change the visible content of a signed PDF document. So our starting point is a signed PDF document and the attacker now um, adds a malicious body update, malicious XF section, malicious trailer through an incremental update or a combination of these parts. And um, if we take a look on this document, we see again the four parts and uh, the object number four contains the content stream. So now the attacker wants to trick an employee and thinking he signs this document to get a reward 
um, but he signs his own resignation. So, <laughs> so the employee uh, wants his reward, of course, and signs his document, and now the attacker changes exactly the, con uh, the object number four, which contains originally the, uh, the content of, um, of this document, to now your fire get out immediately. So this one is one simple uh, attack vector of the incremental saving attack. We got more complex ones. Okay, and yeah, uh, incremental saving attack was uh, one of three uh, attack classes in the paper, CCS paper from 2019. So in 2021, um, we introduced a new attack class called shadow attacks, and now the attacker hides content uh, within, uh, into uh, the unsigned PDF document. So before the document is signed, the attacker uh, places some hidden content, which is not shown to the victim or not displayed to the victim. He now sends his document to uh, the employee or to the victim, in our case, again, the employee, and of course, he wants his reward and signed his document. And sends us back to the attacker, and now the attacker um, um, makes the uh, hidden content visible. So the original content is hidden and the shadow content is now visible. And again, you're fired, get out immediately, employee. So uh, our next core issue for today is the verification versus rendering problem. So a very useful features in PDFs are annotations. So we can use the stamp annotation to place an image as big as we want anywhere in the document, and we add, uh, can add uh, free text comments, uh, which means we can add text to the document. So this can be used on certified documents per le uh, level P3, uh, permission level P3, um, but if the application do not check this permission level correctly, um, we can do this in P1 and P2 levels, uh, which in our analysis, analysis there were uh, 11 of, out of 26 applications that do not check this level uh, correctly. It's just an annotation, but go wrong. Um, now the attacker wants to um, change the transfer data um, or replace the transfer data with own bank account information. So we place a white image using a stamp annotation to hide its original content. And the next step, he adds a free text uh, annotation to add his own bank account information. And since this uh, modification is allowed through uh, the permission level, uh, the, uh, the signature is still valid, but uh, different content is displayed to the victim. We already talked about the UI layer one, which is the signature bar, and the UI layer two, which is the signature validation panel. But in the context of evil annotation attacks, another UI layer is relevant. So the UI layer of three uh, contains a list of annotations that were added to the document. And of course, a smart user can detect these uh, changes and will not trust this document anymore. But we found a solution for this problem by just um, uh, change the, the type of the annotation to one that's not specified by the specification. So we change free text to null, and now the list is empty. Okay, for the next topic, I am back to Vladislav. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So we have now the, core, the two core issues, the partial signatures and the signature values. Perhaps you might think PDFs are broken and this is the only format which is currently having problems with digital signatures. That's the reason why we included this section, just to relax you. And... Um, Simon got bored uh, after the PDF attacks on signatures and uh, took a look on ODFs on an open document format. Uh, it's an XML based, has, it's completely different than PDF, and we were able also to find uh, vulnerabilities there um, by manipulating, allowing us to manipulate arbitrary content and even execute uh, malicious, um, a malicious code. Um, then, we concentrated on the Office Open XML, and this will be published next year, so don't ask me about details for the next two months. Um, but still, they have also a lot of issues uh, there. Uh, so it's not a problem of the PDF specification, it's, it's a problem which should be 
triggered now and should be addressed um, on for basically every single document format handling a PDF signature, um, digital signatures. So what have we learned in the last years? And for us as a researchers, it's very interesting. We have an experienced standard, a lot of features which can we use, and also cryptography is there. So it, it will be, re, remain a relevant topic. And from user's point of view and our point of view, PDFs are everywhere. So uh, of course we need some motivation, but we, need, we don't need a lot of motivation to, to make it, um, yeah, to, to convince the audience that PDFs are relevant a uh, part of our lives. Um, so for this reason, researcher will, uh, will continue working on this area. Um, during our research, we discovered some, some stuff like, uh, well, warnings or validation results. And um, the talk today was amazing, showing that um, the signature validation status, it's not clear every time. So basically, you see here um, a shortcut of the results of the signature validation. And uh, during our research, um, quite often, we thought we broke some application and because we just missed one single warning in panel three in the middle or down um, in, in the window. So um, it was quite a, an indication that something went wrong during the verification, but it was not easy to see it. And um, we currently are planning, uh, planning uh, also a usability study to see um, how good are really uh, validations? Um, and our student uh, just finished our um, a work just mimicking a PDF signature. So a PDF which does not have any signature but has all the panels and stuff so you can barely see a difference. And it was quite fun to see that he was quite successful but it depends on the supported features. Uh, so if you're interested, I can show you in the, in the break um, the, the exploit and uh, probably you can um, see if you can distinguish between signed and not signed uh, PDF file. And last but not least, and this is probably the most important part, is that we are searching also on different areas like single sign-on or authentication protocols and cryptographic protocols like, like TLS. It is, it is very easy for security experts to if we find some vulnerabilities, we just report them and, say, and tell the people, see the best current practices regarding TLS or some other protocol. You violate step five in section six um, and just try to implement it better. And uh, such kind of document does not exist uh, for PDFs as far as I know. And um, such best current practices is very valuable. I think currently you have a lot of applications say 100 and you have 101 possibilities to validate the signature um, so um, i think a best or we think that a best current practices just summarizing the pitfalls which could be made um, it's a valuable thing for the community and um, for example the ITF made a mistake for the old specification. They finalized their security considerations. So they published an RFC and they recognized that this was a very bad idea because security moves forward and they are not able to update the security considerations. So for this reason, they published a draft and they never finalized this draft. So it, it's, it's going to be for ev for, for um, for always a draft, and they update it every time some crazy guys report some new attacks, and they include um, also the new security consideration. So it's a living document um, they can update. And the community is uh, hardly working on this document and constantly updating it. So if you're more interested on attacks or on exploits which we reported, we uh, deployed everything, every single information about PDF signatures publicly available or our exploits are also updated and so on. So you can update, uh, up, download the exploits, download the vulnerable versions of the software and just have fun with them.